In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps of a basic stair calculation. This calculation is going to be in inches. This basic stair calculation is a straight set of stairs, a single flight from one elevation to another, from one floor to another, just a straight line, or from one floor to a landing. It also works that way. So let me show you what I have here, set up around the desk here. Here I have the top of the desk marked as landing. I want a set of stairs built here in the middle of the classroom to this elevation from the floor below there. It's going to be uh, three or four steps or so and uh, I also have something else in view there. This is going to be what's called a trapped run for the run of the stairs. You can see in the distance where I put the razors and the garbage can, there's a hallway. The garbage can is in this imaginary hallway. The set of stairs, I'm going to start here at the top of the landing, or, or uh, this is where you take your first step down, and uh, maybe two or, three stair, uh, two, or, two or three more steps, I don't know how many. And uh, it's got, the last step is going to be before the hallway, and uh, that's how... The, my set of stairs is going to meet the uh, opening there in the wall to go into the hallway. No part of the stair may go into the hallway. So this is what is called a trapped run. A trapped run calculation is very, very similar to a calculation without a trapped run. I just want to show you the two skills in one because it's uh, really, uh, really not much uh, more calculated than a single set of stairs. So I'm going to explain the terminology of stair building as we go along. You need two measurements for this situation. The first measurement is going to be a vertical measurement here and you have to measure the height of the landing here. And in this case this measurement is 25 and a half inches. Another measurement here is taken horizontally but just because it's a trapped it's a trapped run if it isn't in your case in your situation at home say from a deck somewhere an, an exterior set of stairs out in the garden where it's not a trapped run then don't worry about it but in this case I'm going to take a measurement and this length is 35 inches now I have two measurements taken on site and I can do my stair calculations from here on just set the camera and let's go. I have what was called a total rise. The total rise was the difference in elevation from the floor to the top of the deck or the top of the landing. This total difference in elevation is called the total rise and in our case that was 25 and a half inches. The second measurement I took is called total run and in our case it was exactly 35 inches. I haven't mentioned it yet but there's one more skill that you need to use to do this calculation. You need to be able to convert fraction from fraction format to decimal inches and back fluently. Somewhere here I'm going to insert a link. I have another clip where I demonstrate those skills. In this video I'm not going to walk you through those steps. I'm just going to demonstrate, I'm just going to use the skills themselves to go from fractional format to decimal format without a lot of explanations. But if you need to uh, refresh yourself I'm going to put a link here. So. I also need one or two more numbers and I'm going to explain. My next number that I'm going to use is called desired unit rise and in my case it's going to be six inches. What this means is that I want to be my unit rise to, to be six inches. 
every step, the height of every step, I want around 6 inches. That's a convenient height to lift your foot when you take one step, another and another. And as you go up to a total elevation of 25 and a half inches, uh, 6 inches is a convenient, nice number for a casual set of stairs. So that's what's meant by unit rise. The unit being each and every single step, one and then the next one, and then a third one, and maybe a fourth one, I don't know. So that's what's meant by unit rise, and that's why it's desired, because uh, we, need to, we need to see how many of these six inches can we fit into the 25 and a half inch total rise. So what we need to do is divide that number by that number. But, like I said, you cannot enter into the calculator 25 and a half in fractional format. I'm just going to convert it right away to 25.5. Now we can divide that number by 6, that many inches by that many inches, to get the number of steps, number of steps that we are going to take 6 inches at a time to get to a full elevation of 25 and a half inches. 25.5 divided by 6, 4.25. 4.25 steps. Now right away, 4.25, we have a problem with that number because you cannot have within normality 4.25 or 4 and a quarter steps. This has to be a whole number. You either take 4 steps to get up to this elevation or you have to take five steps to get up to this elevation. Now think about it. If you decide to take four steps, that means that your original desired unit rise is going to have to be bigger because four steps, four bigger steps will take you up to 25 and a half inches or you can choose to take five steps but in that case five smaller steps than six inches will take you up to the full height of 25 and a half inches. So both of these are okay, just as long as you're aware that uh, with more steps you're gonna have smaller unit rises, which is fine, it's gonna be more convenient, but if you feel strong and powerful you can go with four steps and take a little bigger steps than six inches. In this case, I choose to go with four inches. We have a another we have another division to do now because the 25 and a half inches of total height needs to be divided into four equal parts. We didn't know in the beginning whether it's going to be three steps, four steps, five steps, or what. But now that I have the unit, the desired unit rise, I know it's going to be four steps. I'm going to go with four steps. Let's see what the actual unit rise is going to be actual unit rise I'm going to divide the total rise with the number of steps that I've chosen 25.5 divided by 4 equals 6.375 inches 6.375 inches and that is a final answer that we are going to lay out with our stair gauges on a carpenter's framing square. Please notice that you cannot lay out 0.375 inches as is. We need to convert it to a decimal form, from a decimal format to a fraction format. So, and this is where I'm not going to explain it too much. I'm just going to do it. So I'm just going to subtract the six. I have all the decimal digits saved. And I want to see 16, and that's going to be C16, 6 16, so that's 3 eighths of an inch. No more explanation on this conversion. That decimal number is that many inches in fractional format, 6 and 3 eighths. I'm good to go there. I got one more number to lay out, the length of the run. And for this, I'm going to draw a picture here with my deck or landing in it. That's where I start. That's, that's the uh, landing. 
and that's where my and that's how my steps are gonna be six inches at a time here is my first step second step third step fourth step fourth step there and my stair stringer is gonna have this shape here this piece is what I need to cut out of wood S it stands for stringer that's the piece that I need to make for the stairs. It's gonna be looking a little more proportionate, okay? Just work with me on this concept. Now, I have four risers, four unit rises on this set of stairs. And this is gonna be here meeting the floor. And then the hallway is gonna be here. And please notice that with this configuration where the edge of the deck is supporting your stair stringer the number of rises and number of runs are not identical this is your first run here and a run is a horizontal part of a set of stairs that one is your run that's where you place your foot when you go up so that's where you step and then here is your second run and here is your third unit run you see you have four rises but you only have three runs it's important to notice that you always have one one fewer runs than rises when the stair stringer and the landing meet in this configuration what that means is that this 35 inch distance has to be spanned equally with three steps so what I need to do is divide 35 inches into three equal portions. Whatever my, whatever my desired unit run would be is irrelevant. I only have 35 inches of space and that's what I'm going to have to work with. Let's divide 35 inches by three parts. 35 inches into three parts. That means every step is going to be 11.66 inches long. And this is going to be my actual unit run. 11.6666 inches long. And it is a non-terminating, repeating, infinite decimal. It's going to be a problem laying it out and I need to convert it into fraction format so that's 11 inches I'm just gonna I'm just gonna subtract the 11 so I have all the decimal digits and I want to see 16th of an inch so that's gonna be 10.6 I'm gonna round it up to 11 so I have 11 16th please note that this 11 16th is approximate and is rounded up if you place your stair gauge at the 11 inches and 11 16th spot it's gonna be a little too long because the actual measurement is 10.6 16th now 10.6 16th I wouldn't entirely call it a normal fraction but you get it that it's gonna be a little less than 11 16th so just keep that one in mind for accurate layout we need to do one more calculation and that's only for the layout this number here and this number here we're good to go to place our stair gauges on our framing square one more calculation to go is called the unit bridge the unit bridge is measured here between one unit rise and one unit run we have one unit bridge what we need to do is this is an A square B square C square situation here we have the unit rise we have the unit run we have to calculate and do a little square root business to get the unit bridge Let's go back to the previous number and I need to enter the amounts in decimal format 6.375 squared 
there it is, plus the other number was 11.666. 11. Point, and I want to fill the screen with sixes to be as accurate as possibly I can, as possible. Square that one equals. We're not done. We're square rooting this one, and on this calculator, it's second function square root equals. That's the number we need. 13.29. I'm just going to leave it on the display. The unit bridge is 13.29 inches. And I do not want to convert this one into inches and fractions of an inch because I do not need the single unit bridge. I want to triple it right away and I'm going to explain it in a second. Times 3 equals that number. 39.88 and I don't want to write this one down too much either I need a fraction out of it so I'm going to subtract the 39 again I have all the decimal digits saved and I want to see 16 of an inch that's close enough to 14 16 close enough to 7 eighths of an inch so it's going to be 39 and 7 eighths I tripled the unit bridge because uh, to stay on track with the stair layout when this stair stringer is on a piece of wood and you lay out the zigzag lines and the piece of wood is looking like this before we cut it up okay I need this first unit bridge and the second unit bridge and the last unit bridge to be laid out accurately. I need three unit bridges because I have three runs and the first order of business is to pick a spot somewhere on the stair stringer and lay out this measurement in one length. So when I place my stair gauges uh, and uh, framing square set for these measurements along the edge of the wood, I can tweak it a little bit because the wood is never too straight, the edge of it is rounded, you will see it in the stair layout video, and it's a little bit problematic. These two reference points here will help me stay on track so that my actual pencil line on the piece of wood before I cut into it is not too long, is not too short, but is as close as possible to the actual calculations and the actual me measurements, particularly that we have some rounding here in these calculations, okay? So that's why we need to triple that one. And if I had 14 runs on this set of stairs, I would need to times it by three to make sure that every third, every third uh, little zigzag line is in its place and I would need to also times it by 14 to make sure that the total run, the total, uh, not run, the total bridge length is also as close to mathematically correct as possible. Okay, so now we are set to go with our numbers. We can lay out our stair on a piece of 2x10 or 2x12.